This here is the floor function, also sometimes called the greatest integer function. In this video, I'm going to call it the floor function because that's a shorter name, a little quicker to talk about it that way. We're going to answer this question. Where is f of x equals floor of x plus x discontinuous? The floor function pretty commonly occurs in the beginning of calculus classes because it's a particularly troublesome function when it comes to continuity, and it can of course get even more difficult when you're trying to consider transformations of the floor function, like what if we take the floor function and add x to it? What does that look like, and where is it discontinuous? This is a rather straightforward question because adding x certainly does not create any new discontinuities. x is just a simple linear function that's continuous everywhere, so all of the discontinuities of f of x are only there because of the discontinuities of the floor function. The floor function, as a quick recap, just rounds the input down. It's called the greatest integer because the floor of 3.14 for example, equals the greatest integer that's less than or equal to the input. So it just rounds it down to three. That's how the floor function works. Because of this rounding down behavior, the floor function has discontinuities at every integer. The floor of two is just two, because the greatest integer less than or equal to two is two. And if you increase the input a little bit, like 2.1, it's still going to be rounded down to two. Even as you increase the input all the way to 2.9, it still gets rounded down to two. But as soon as you get to the next integer, the floor of 3, the output jumps from 2 all the way up to 3. So the floor function is discontinuous at every integer. We'll look at a graph in a moment, but this is the answer to the discontinuity question. f of x equals floor of x plus x is discontinuous everywhere floor of x is discontinuous, which is at every integer. So this function f of x is discontinuous at every integer, because the floor function is discontinuous at every integer, and those problems still exist when we add x to it. Considering the graph of the function f of x is also a useful way to learn about its discontinuities. Before we graph f of x, it may be helpful to graph its component functions, the floor function, which I've graphed in red, and the linear function y equals x, which I have graphed in green. Now, y equals x shouldn't be surprising, and hopefully this isn't the first time you've seen a graph of the floor function. It looks like this. Just like we were describing, you can see how from 0 all the way up to 1, the floor function is rounding down to 0. But as soon as we get to 1, it jumps up. So we have an open circle there at x equals 1, because once we get there, the function jumps up to a value of 1. And then for values like 1 and 1.2 and 1.9, it's rounding all of those down to 1. So you just have a flat line until you get to the next integer of 2, where it jumps up to 2. With this in mind, what does the graph of our function f of x look like? Let's put the graph over here. At first, looking at this graph, we see that the floor function is just 0. Let's just start at x equals 0 for this graph. At first, the floor function is just x equals 0. So when we add it to x, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to still have y equals x until we get to x equals 1. When we get to x equals 1, the value of the floor function is 1. So we're still going to have the line y equals x, but it's actually going to be bumped up 1 because of this value of the floor function. Once we get to 2, a similar thing will happen. We'll continue to have y equals x, but because we're adding the floor function to it, at x equals 2, the floor function jumps up to 2. And so, again, this line is going to be moved up 1. This pattern continues in the negative direction. If we plug negative 0.5 into the floor function, it rounds it down to negative 1. So our line, y equals x, will get shifted down 1 because of the addition of the floor function. 
As for the endpoints of these segments, they are just like the endpoints of the greatest integer function. Looking at this first one, we have a solid dot at first, because the greatest integer function rounds 0 to 0. And then once we get to x equals 1, there's an open circle, because right at x equals 1, it jumps up to a value of 1. And so the ends on the right are open circles, the ends of the segments on the left are filled in circles. So this is the graph of our function, the floor of x plus x, and of course we can see how there are jump discontinuities at every integer value of x. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 1 course and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more practice with the floor function and all other calc topics. Thanks for watching. Can't even cover myself up from instant. Looks like I'm